Okay, yay! Live on YouTube. What's up, everybody? You guys need to wake up now. It's time for class to start. I'm Coach Neighbors, and I approve this message. Okay, let's stop playing around. I hope everybody's had a wonderful day. It's time to learn some stuff. So I originally was going to go live on Facebook tonight because um, I got a few people on there that have been talking a little crap and we needed to, to clear up a few things, some misunderstandings. And Facebook wouldn't let me on. I think they might be a little grumpy because we've been doing our live stream uh, on the radio station from Facebook. And uh, the producer and owner of the radio station, he got, he got booted from streaming live on YouTube also. I didn't realize I got booted until the night. But that's all right, because I can come over here to YouTube and do the same thing and then just uh, record as video and stick it right into Facebook people's face. So my name is Coach Neighbors, and I'm the owner of Advocates for Justice Paralegal Service. We are different and we prove it. So I specialize in foreclosure defense strategies, lawsuit packages, third party debt collections, and a bunch of other stuff, but we kind of try to focus on those few things. And um, I'm not here posting to make anybody feel sorry for me. That's what some of the people in the, in the, in the Facebook group thought. I was like, no. Now I'm here posting to make a special offer to all the Airbnb owner operators uh, who are willing to fight and to educate folks. And also I'm offering the deal to, to just people in, in the public that's, that's willing to stand up and, and that's tired of paying property tax. That's what this is about tonight. It's about the property tax. So I got some people complaining about that. So we're gonna kind of go over that. And they started attacking me, talking about what I've been through, what, what my family went through with the federal government years ago. I'm not sure what the hell they had to do with anything. And I'm sad to have to bring it up, but I got no problem bringing it up because it's what motivated me to do what I'm doing right now. And if anybody asks me why I do what I'm doing, you about to learn here in a few minutes. So it's interesting every time I start helping people do stuff and make a, uh, make a package and stick out there, um, I got these haters that come out of the woodworks and start attacking me and talking about uh, what I, what happened in my past 10 years ago and all this stuff. And I don't understand what the hell any of that has to do with, uh, with, the pro with the illegal property taxes and control the city has over your property. And with me teaching you how, how to handle that situation. So when I went through what my family went through, I decided to forget and not carry hatred around in my heart because it sucks up the space for love. And unfortunately, there's people on Facebook uh, feed that want to keep bringing all that up. I imagine it's probably the cops or whatever because they look like crap because I was not convicted. They had to drop all the charges and had to let me go in the end. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about all that. So I just want to get some of these facts on the record. So when people are hearing this crap or reading this crap on, on Facebook, they'll have some kind of idea of what the real truth is. Now, the fact the government was forced to release me after 33 months with no conviction shows that they violated me. I was jailed for blogging and demanding Washington DC investigate the federal prosecutors Tara D. Moorhead and Marietta Parker for the illegal activity they were doing uh, harassing my wife and my family. And I was jailed for contempt of court because I refused to stop blogging and demanding investigation into the federal prosecutor's office. Now I have a right to blog, but apparently the judge didn't think so. So while I was on my government vacation, the investigators and my, my 13th, 12th or 13th attorney visited me in jail to let me know that they could get me out today. 
Okay, I've been sitting in there probably the first time they came to let me know they could get me out. I think I had been sitting in jail now for contempt of court. I've never been convicted of anything in my life, ever. But I was sitting in there. They came to let me know. I think it was uh, two months after I'd been locked up. They didn't really say a whole lot. Okay, but the second time I figured it out. They came the second time and they told me they could get me out. All I had to do was say that I knew that there was something illegal going on in my wife's in my wife's secondhand store. Yeah, they needed me to lie on my wife so I could get out of jail and so they could convict her because they didn't have shit. Well, any of you who know me know that didn't work out very well for them, okay? Cause there ain't no way in hell that I'm about to lie on my wife just to save myself. Like I trust that they would let me out. Okay. I didn't just show up on the turn up truck this morning. And if I did, it was pretty stinking early. So when they came to me with that crap, what I did was I told them, I told them, I know they don't have nothing on my wife because she wasn't doing anything illegal. And that I was not in a hurry to leave because I like the food. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe I said that. That's what I told them. And they got a little pissed off. They got a little grumpy. And they decided to teach me a lesson by sending me back to the medical facility with a forced medication order. Now, this is after they had sent me to four different states for, uh, for mental evaluations in four different states. The whole ordeal took me 33 months, 33 months of my life being shipped all over the country and treated like a freaking animal. They sent me back to the uh, medical facility in Bunton, North Carolina with a forced medication order. And I appealed the forced medication order from the medical facility, pro se, and I won. I had to fire my attorney, my appellate attorney, because he was not trying to help me. So I think he was the 14th attorney. And, and when I won the appeal, I blocked them from drugging me. So they could not, they could not drug me up. They were really, really grumpy then. And they left me sitting in a mental institution for additional six months. Um, trying to get me involved in a fight. Yeah, they, they paid, they gave uh, some other inmates commissary to come and get in my face and try to start a fight and try to, to get me in a fight so they could say I was out of control and dangerous. And if they were able to do that, then they could have medicated me within the facility without a judge's order. They would have had an administration hearing and then the quack doctor would have came in and told them that I was, you know, out of control or whatever, whatever. And I was a danger to the staff and the patients. And then they could have medicated me there in the facility. Yeah, pretty scary. You know, it's, it's hard to think that somebody could, that they would put somebody through that just to teach them a lesson. And if they did that, so when the government, when my government vacation ended, my wife was convicted because she trusted her attorney who failed to call a single witness in her trial. And that my friend is the motivation for what I do. I teach people how to get things done without the attorneys and I love my job. The federal prosecutors uh, place illegal liens against our property, against our home to block us from selling. And we actually have buyers and everything. And the day we were gonna close on the deal, we found out that the government rushed around and put an illegal less penis lien against our property. Illegal lien. They never filed it, they never followed the procedures. They didn't do any of the things that they were supposed to do. And when I got out, uh, when my government vacation was over, the prosecutors had, uh, the attorneys rushed the foreclosure process. So that's when, uh, when I started on learning uh, foreclosure defense.
trying to save my own property. I didn't learn fast enough, but I've helped plenty of people right now get back in attorney's faces all across the United States of America. And I'm pretty proud that I was able to turn something really ugly into something positive and doing what I'm doing, helping other people. Now, let me check. Hey, who's here today, guys? Howdy. I see it got four people watching. So we're gonna we're gonna just roll on. So I spent I have spent a lot of time learning how to protect my wife from the beatdown they gave her for refusing their deal and maintaining her innocence. We are not going to allow the city to step on our rights anymore. Now, the reason we're here today is uh, my wife owns, uh, operates an Airbnb, and the city is making plans to shut them all down except for the owner occupied buildings. So basically uh, they want businesses. So basically they wanna shut everybody down except the bed and breakfasts. And the bed and breakfasts are usually in the historic homes. So they're connected with the city. Yeah. So I'm gonna share with you guys some, I'm gonna share with you guys here free today, one of the biggest tips that you need to, to eliminate your property taxes. And I ask only that you subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get more, more free information because that's what I'm about. I'm putting the free information on the, on, the on the pavement where you can use that rubber to burn it. And the stuff that I'm helping you with, you can use in your foreclosure today. So before we get to the subject of today's uh, conversation, we want to talk a little bit about affordable housing or the claim lack thereof. So some people feel like Airbnb owners are, are a menace to, to, to the community because we're using housing that families uh, could be living in. And that issue, that, that issue was mentioned on the Facebook feed a, a couple of times. And the issue with affordable housing is families struggling to get them, their family qualified to rent due to poor credit. It don't have nothing to do with property owners renting up or buying up all the property and turning them into Airbnbs. Property owners do not want to rent to families who have bad credit for obvious reasons. Now, I'm, no offense to anybody who has bad credit, especially now, because with all this pandemic crap going on, I mean, we're lucky to, to be able to get everything paid and get to stay in your house. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. One of the other things too that these people don't realize when they're thinking we're taking affordable housing away from, away from families is that renters tear up the property. They smoke in the house. They never invest in the property to make it look nice outside. And I know this firsthand after reconditioning the unit that my wife operates. That place was so nasty, their dogs urinated in the back room closet all over the closet door so bad that it bubbled up from being wet. The wood bubbled up from being wet. And all over the closet door, the, the place smells so bad, it took us weeks to get the smell out of there. And a couple of bad reviews because of, of, of the smell. Property owners rent to people operating Airbnbs because the operators fix up the property. They spend a considerable amount of income making the, pro, uh, make, making the Airbnb slash property marketable. If the property owners wanted to pass up Airbnb operators and rent to families, they could. It could very easy. If they could find families that qualify, nobody wants to rent to someone who has 
who has bad credit. And that's just, that's a fact. It's business. The fact that, the fact is, if a family's looking to rent um, qualified, they would be, if, if families looking to rent qualified, if they all qualify, there would be no rental units open for Airbnb operators. Just think about it. It's not a shortage of, 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 of units. It's what it is, it's a, a problem with the affordability because people can't afford the rent that these people are asking right now. And I don't see the city of Lawrence approving any projects like Edgewood the government subsidized housing to help struggling families. The only thing I see the city approving are the expensive brand new apartment complexes, huge apartment complexes that actually have buses that run these peak kids back and forth because no one can afford to live in there but kids, college students. And when you have three or four college students together, they can afford it. Otherwise, no families can afford to live in those brand new apartments. But I don't see any of you bitching about that. So the city has no legal authority to control Airbnb property owners or private property. Illegal control of your property deed is what triggers the city's misguided conclusion that they can control what you do with your private property. Once they convince you to allow them to register your deed in their office, that is what starts the property taxes, the zone, coding enforcement, all of that. Your private property is reclassified as residential, agricultural, or commercial, and for the sole purpose of illegal taxation. They change the classification of your property for the sole purpose of illegal taxation. Your private property is reclassified, and under Title 42, Section 1982, property rights of citizens shows that the city cannot control land because they do not have jurisdiction. There is no law that requires property owners to pay property taxes. There's no law that requires property owners to register their deed in the county recorder's office. And if you find one, you post it and you show me, you post it in the comment section down below. And I'll give you a free document from my website, whatever you want. They trick you into allowing them to register the deed to your property in their office. And registering the, uh, the property deed starts the tax collection. It starts to control over your property. It starts all of that. USC Title 42, 1982 states that federal or state government agencies must have a monetary or proprietary interest in your real property to have jurisdiction over it. If your land has no government grant funding or is subsidized, uh, is a subsidized government project, then the agency does not have jurisdiction over your private property. By voluntarily placing one's private property deed into their corporate records, it is presumed that one is a debtor to the state. When the attorney places your documents in their, your document of title in their records, the attorney creates a secret constructive quasi trust on the assumption that their state corporation has an interest in your land and they now control your property rights such as possession, et cetera, and you are forced to pay an annual fee taxes in return for some wonderful benefits. So let's talk about some of these benefits. They are the privilege of applying to government corporations for building permits to regulate your land use and uh, control usage by zoning, land permits, certificates of occupancy, and other government grants compel benefits and privileges of paying taxes. 
So once the taxes start, then you got to get permission to do what you what you want to do on your land. The attorney, without your consent, recorded the deed, thereby selling your land into captivity, into slavery of their government corporation. You have been damaged by having your deed placed on, on record as an asset for the corporation, state government, and since it is pledged as collateral for debts which you supposedly owe, the state now pledges in return your land deed as security collateral for state debts. So I bet you didn't know that your land, your private property has a, a debt attached to it. Now, my eliminate property tax lawsuit package in that package, you will sue the person who registered your property in the county recorder's office, um, the deed of office, the deed of re in the county recorder's office of deeds um, for failure to inform you in advance of the fraud. They failed to inform you that your private property land was not required to be recorded. The record the recorder of records office has a good faith obligation to explain full in full detail and serve written notice in advance of any legal incapacities or disabilities that were about to befall you by recordation. See UCC 1-203 and 1-201, 25, 26, and 27. If you are an Airbnb bear owner operator, who lives in Lawrence and would like to invest in the Lemonade Property Tax Lawsuit Package, I'm going to offer you a special deal tonight. And that deal ends Monday at 12 noon Central Time. Now, I'm going to reduce the price from $500 down to $100 because I want people to use it. And what I, what I would like to do for the people who invest in this super deal, I would like you to subscribe to my channel. I would like you to leave me a, a, a Google review um, about, the pack, about the document if you felt like the document has value after you read it. I would also like you to state in your review, you're going to do a follow-up and let them know how things go. And I, I expect you to follow up and keep and keep us uh, up to date. And I would like to have some of you who uh, invest in this deal call into the radio show on Wednesdays at one o'clock, HamiltonRadio.net, and and tell and tell everybody what you think about the package. And I want you to be honest. I want people to see that there's options. What I do, there's, I haven't seen anybody that's doing what I do. And I haven't seen anybody doing anything to help anybody cheap enough to where people can afford it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm doing this cheap enough where people can not afford it. Because if the people can't afford it, then I'm just wasting my time. And I like helping people kick attorney's butts. And that's what I'm all about. And if you watch any of my videos, I think I prove I think I proved that. Now you have a chance to challenge the legality of the illegality of your property tax for one hundred dollars. I haven't changed it yet, so you guys are gonna have to wait till I get done with this live feed. As soon as I finish the, the video here, uh, as soon as I finish the live feed, I'll go to the website and make the change on the document. And I want to make sure that all of you who are my YouTube subscribing people have an opportunity to get this document too. If you're facing a property tax situation and you like to smash somebody in the face. So this document is gonna be on sale for $100 until Monday. And like I said, I, I put the terms in there. I want you guys to give me a review on the document. And I also like would like you to, um, to state in in the in the review that you're going to do a follow up, and kind of keep us and keep us up to date on how it's going. Um, if you invest in the package, 
you should send me a, a link to my uh, foreclosure rescue Facebook page and let me know you invested in the package and I'll let you in the group. And then we can talk in the group. The group is the best place to reach me at if you have a question, because I'm on there a lot. It's easier for me to answer your question while I'm doing things than it is to stop everything I'm doing and, and answer the phone. And if you call me, please, please don't call me to discuss what if the state doesn't back down or what if, what if, what if somebody said, I don't have time to talk about all of that crap, okay? To me, that's the fear running through your head. You gotta get that under control. I don't like dealing, I don't deal well with people's fear. You are either here to do whatever it takes or you need to go sit down. So that's just the way I'm gonna put that. So if you call me and you start talking about those things and I'm a little rude to you, I'm sorry. But I'm, when you call me with something, it should be for something important or to say great job or something. Don't call me talking about all of this fear stuff because I don't have time for that. And you don't either. And what I tell people is you need to channel that fear into action and get some shit done. Because a lot of times the people that have this problem struggle to get things done. Most of the time it's because they're so worried about everything being absolutely perfect like the attorney would file it. And we already went over that a couple of weeks ago. Attorneys don't have no license. And the fact that the court's holding you to the higher standard than attorney because attorney don't have no license is fraud. So that's all I wanna say on that. Now, this deal does not come with the phone coaching and everything like the lawsuit packages do when you pay the full price. This deal comes you get the you get the pat you get the documents and you gotta figure it out. Now there's in the instructional video playlist on my YouTube channel, there is a video that you can go and watch that walks you through the loss, the eliminate lawsuit, uh, the eliminate property tax lawsuit package. Now you can when you join the Facebook page, you will be able to ask questions in the group or whatever. And the reason we set it up this way is because at some point I'm going to get too busy to answer people's questions in a timely manner that's going to help you defend your property. So I'm counting on other members of the group being able to help out because people are, I'll have, I should have people in the group that have done every stage of the process. So there should be someone that would, that would be able to answer your questions if the questions are about the lawsuit packages and not about what ifs, because what ifs, we don't do what ifs. We do what we have and we deal with what we get. So that's how we roll on that. Um, I'm gonna leave a link to the eliminate lawsuit package um, in the feed here in a second. And I'll leave a link to my website and also a link to my um, my online course. So let's move this down here and take a look and see. I've got six people. Hey, everybody. Peter Sylvester. Peter from New Orleans. Hey, Peter. Stephen Johnson. Hey, Stephen. Oh, hey, Teresa. Teresa is from Maryland. Steven Johnson says, that makes me admire you more. You mean my property tax thing that I'm sticking in their face? Or the fact that I dropped the price down to a hundred bucks. I think I'm putting my money where my mouth's at or my mouth where my money's at or something like that. Because I ain't playing and I wanna make sure that people have an opportunity to get this stuff done. I know everybody's struggling right now. And when the pandemic started, I knew that people were gonna be struggling. And that's why I dropped the prices to from 850 bucks down to $500. And once I qualify on YouTube to host ads on my channel and I can make that big money from those ads, I'm gonna drop my prices even lower. My goal is to make sure that nobody gets turned away that's willing to stand up and fight. That's my goal. 
And I have another ghost too. One day I was sitting here daydreaming and my wife was looking at me and she, she says, what are you thinking about? Cause I was like, oh, nothing, nothing, honey. She's like, no, 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 what are you thinking about? And it's like, well, I was thinking about how cool it would be if everybody in, a, in the United States of America facing foreclosure was able to use my stuff. Yeah. Of course she's like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> You asked, so there you go. <laughs> uh, okay, so Roger. Oh yeah, Roger. I had to get a nicer mic because we're using the mic on my on my uh, on my on my camera. I had to lean forward all the time, you know, and I was afraid people would be looking up my nose. <laughs> okay. Let me stay focused. I'm, I'm getting a little bit off the subject here, but thank you. And yeah, I'm trying to look professional as I learn and go. Ryan Dixon from Ocala, Florida. Hey Ryan, my daughter lives in Plant City. I spent a little time in Florida and I had a few people in court in Newport Ritchie. And there were some attorneys over there that are not very happy that they had to go sit down. Actually, the judge told uh, those people to get out of his court and told the attorneys to work it out outside of his court. So Ryan Dixon says uh, he bought the real estate uh, tax package, sent it out, sent out the notice of claim already, waited 30 days uh, to file the, so Ryan did, oh, so here, oh, wait a minute, and Yep, I bet. I wish people did know the difference between residential and private. So, Ryan, have they responded to the notice of claim to the notice of claim letter uh, in the Lemonade Property Tax Lawsuit Package? So, Stephen John says, "What about the return of the property tax already paid?" Clay County, Florida, just underneath Jacksonville. So, Stephen. Um, the lawsuit package, you're suing them for $5.5 million. I, I think that should cover it. If not, you might want to bump that up a little bit. What's the foreclosure page again? I couldn't see where the group was. Um, I'll post it. I'll post it right now, Ryan, while you're, while I'm thinking about it. So I don't forget. So hang on a second, let me find it. Okay, there it is. So here is the link to my Facebook page, Foreclosure, foreclosure Help. There you go. There's a link to the Facebook page, to the private group. Now I'm going to start a, a new group for the online course students. And I have about six or seven people enrolled uh, in the course. So that's pretty cool. And I wanna share this video with you guys too, how to get on the do not detain list. This has to do with reclaiming your state citizenship and it's a wonderful video to watch, especially if your skin is brown. And you need to know this. So when the popo is messing with you, you already have it set up. When they run your driver's license, it'll come back as diplomatic immunity. Yeah, it'll come back as do not detain. And this is the link to the Lemonade Property Tax Lawsuit Package. for anybody interested in it. Right now, I lowered the price um, to $300 when I was doing the radio show this past Wednesday, and I decided I'm gonna lower it again. I want people to be able, to, I want people to use it so I can see how they try to respond to it. And so other people can see that there's an option. You don't have to keep paying. Now, Roger, 
um, Roger used uh, the the property tax, and they actually he told me the city commissioner and the attorney and somebody else came to his house to talk to him to convince him that he had to pay property taxes. <laughs> he had to pay taxes. And uh, I think he argued with them. He, Roger learned, uh, learned uh, the document very well. So he wasn't even having it. Ryan Ditchin says, awesome. You are amazing uh, advice, pearls and wisdoms. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I get a lot of stuff. That that document that uh document from you that uh, video from Yusef, I actually got that from Ken, uh Ken. I think his name is Ken from California. He's usually here. But I usually come on tomorrow, but I was all ready to go on Facebook tonight and then I found out that Facebook blocked me and they wouldn't let me on. So I just came on here and then I'm gonna post it on there when I'm done, stick it in their face. So. The problems you went through, yeah, through our judicial system. Yeah, well, you know, I went through some, I went through some shit, that's for damn sure. But you know what? Uh, at the end of the day, God was had my back and they can take the material stuff, but they couldn't take my belief, my, my, my belief in God. They were not able to take away my love for my family or my will to fight. And they got a little pissed off at me because um, I speak Spanish a little bit and I was helping the Mexicans with their legal paperwork. And I actually helped three people get out of a CCA detention center. And, and that's when they kind of decided they needed to, to do something with me. <laughs> I'm a problem child and I'm pretty damn proud of it. And thank you, thank you, Ryan. I, 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 I take this whole thing very serious. You know, they, 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 they took all my stuff and sent me off on a government vacation for 33 months. And so this is my retirement package and it has to work. And believe me, they tried a couple of times to get me shut down. The assistant attorney general for the state of Kansas was up in my face for over a year. And I'm still here and they're over there. So I actually completed that process in the video uh, to reclaim my state citizenship. Because see, here's the deal. This corporation does not have statutory jurisdiction over a state citizen without an injured party. And these for these fake foreclosures and, and liens that they put on your stuff, all of that crap is done without an injured party. There ain't no injured party. The foreclosure is being done by a third party debt collector. There ain't no injured party. So now people have a chance to step up to the plate and do something about the illegal property tax collection. Because here's the deal. If there's no law that forces you to file the deed to your property in their, to register a deed to your property in their office, then you should be able to formally request it back and be done. The issue of the tax is not your freaking problem. Back in the day, People used to keep your deed to your property in your in your family Bible. You have it notarized, you put it in a family Bible, and that's where it stayed. If somebody wanted to, you know, take over your property, they'd have to come up with a deed that was signed and notarized prior to yours. It was simple back then. But now once the bar members got involved, they had to have their own office to keep everything in. And they say, we need to keep it in this office so that we can make sure that, that uh, your property is protected and nobody takes over your property. Well, you know what? That's the biggest bunch of crap, crock or crap that I've ever, I have people in the Facebook page that have, that have all the documents to verify that their property has been paid off in full. Sue and Jay Bowyer, they're one of them that I can think of right off the top of my head but yet they're in foreclosure. So how the hell 
do you end up in foreclosure when you have the lien release, you have all the documentation to prove that your property's paid off? Well, you end up in foreclosure because the attorneys, the, the fraudulent attorneys go to the county recorder's office and they get your property information from their records and they fill out a fake assignment and they file a foreclosure against your property. I have several people. I have people that weren't behind in payments and their house in foreclosure because of a fake assignment. Now, these attorneys know that 80%, probably, probably 95 now percent of us cannot afford an attorney. So they have an 80% chance of getting away with whatever the hell they wanna do. Because most people give up and go sit down. Well, now you don't have to do that. If you don't, if you're ready to fight, you don't have to give up and go sit down. Um, Steven Johnson asked me if I favor bringing a land patent forward. I heard those are great to do. I, I think I would trust that process more than I would trust a uh, quiet title. And the reason I say that, and I don't know everything about the land patent, just a very little bit, but the quiet title process, I learned a little bit about it. And that process relies on the judge to, to rule in your favor. And I have no, I have, I, I, I have no faith in anything that the judge is going to rule in. Okay. And, and that's why our program is not set up to have the judge rule. My program is not set up to go into court and have a judge rule on stuff. Cause I ain't that, that the judge is never going to rule to help you win because the judge is a bar member and they're all working together to throw us under the bus to steal shit from us. So, oh, Steven Johnson, he was not behind his payments either. So they did a fake assignment on you, Steven Johnson, and then file a foreclosure because they knew that they know that most people don't know what to do. And if you're in a non-judicial foreclosure state, it's even worse. Now, let me tell you about the judicial and non-judicial. When I first started, I went through the judicial foreclosure. And then when I started learning how to put these lawsuit packages together and cost these fools money and make them have to jump through some hoops, okay, I had people that bought them that were in judicial foreclosure and they were saying, hey, you know, I filed a lawsuit in federal court and they're still over here trying to kick me out. I was like, well, damn, how could that be? So yeah, I had to go back to the well and do some more research. And what we found out is that they moved the eviction process over to municipal court. And that court does not have jurisdiction to hear any title dispute or anything that has to do with land or anything that's over 300 or $400. <laughs> but they do that. And the reason they do that is because once you get an eviction court, the only thing that they care about, the only thing, when I say they, I'm talking about the attorneys, the judge, the only thing the judge cares about is immediate possession. That's the only thing eviction court can rule on. They cannot rule on a title dispute. So if they can't rule on a title dispute, it shouldn't even be up in there. But that's the way they do it. And the reason they do it that way is because most people don't figure out that they can't rule on a title dispute until it's too late. So you go into eviction court, you argue the title dispute, you actually own the property, the servicer did this, did that, did this, and the judge says, I don't give a crap. Wham, slam the hammer down. And now you got 10 days to pack your shit. And if you don't get your stuff packed, they send people out to help you with that. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have your title dispute filed in federal court. If you're in non-judicial foreclosure, you need to make sure you have your title dispute filed in federal court. And then you use that title dispute to block the eviction process. And there's documents like 16 documents in the non-judicial foreclosure package. And you have a document in there to challenge eviction court jurisdiction. And then once you do that, you take a file stamp copy of that document and you attach it to the document um, to remove the case from eviction court and you remove the case from eviction court and you connect it with federal court where your title dispute is. And the reason you do that and you tell them you're doing this because the, the, the eviction court can only hear immediate possession and the title dispute trumps immediate possession. The immediate possession cannot be determined until the title dispute's been settled in this court. 
And I think I only have one case where they're kind of giving the guy a hard time about accepting it. Most of the other people that have done this, they took it and, and filed it. And, and then you can take a file stamp copy of that notice of removal and take down to state court and let them know that you have removed the case from their jurisdiction. And I would ask them to, to send the, uh, your case file over to federal court, please. And see the look on their face. They'd be like, what? <laughs> yeah, the land patent, uh, Steve and Johnson, I heard is a pretty good deal to do. And it's probably what I would do if I was going down that route, but I don't have time to study that. I'm too, I'm spend uh, most of my time on the front half teaching people how to uh, get their stuff set up so that they get to stay in the house. And that's the main thing that I do is help people get to stay in your house. People always ask me, how many have you won? And blah, blah, blah. You don't win nothing because the judge to win means the judge going to give you some shit and that ain't going to happen. I, at least I haven't seen it happen. I've been doing this for a minute and I ain't seen the judge give nobody nothing. We have to like make them not want to have your ass in their freaking courtroom. That's what we do. So maybe someday I'll get into land patents when I when I when I uh, qualified to host ads on my channel and I can actually hire staff to help me, then I can have people doing some things and uh, I can get a lot more stuff done. Uh, just help me with the phone would be good for starters. Because <laughs> sometimes my phone rings a lot, which is okay. But sometimes I have a hard time getting things done when my phone rings. So if you call me and I don't really want to talk to you, maybe I'm working on something. I had a lady get grumpy with me one day when she called because I didn't have time to spend just like talking. And um, later on, I had to explain to her that I had a person in court that was texting me uh, outside the, the state court's office that they were refusing to file her stuff. And she was texting me what, and I was texting her back what to go in there and tell them. So I didn't have time to even tell her stuff because I was trying to help this this lady and well she got kind of grumpy and when i told her what was going on she felt bad but people need to remember that i'm here to help and get shit done and if i don't have time to talk to you then there's something going on that we're trying to get taken care of and that could be you and that's what i told her it could be you if you were the one in the off in the the, the clerks stand outside the clerk's door texting me trying to figure out what to say to make them take your paperwork I think you would appreciate the fact that I would not spend time on the other phone, on the other line and get this handle so that you can get your stuff filed and get the hell out of there. Cause it's really creepy being up in that place. And I don't, I don't like it. And I've been hauled through there a bunch of times. As a matter of fact, I've been hauled through the federal court so many times and shipped all over the place. I know the guys that run the jail down below the, the marshals. I know them by their first name and, and this, this is honest to God, true story. I couldn't make this crap up. One day when I was fighting the 12 cases that they had against me after I got out, I was uh, went to court for a hearing and I'm walking up to the door and the young marshals that are usually in the basement handling the jail and stuff, they're like, neighbors, you don't need to get your ID out because we know who you are already. Yeah, I'm like, what? Okay, that can't be good if the marshals know who I am and I'm just walking up to the stinking building. And so they kind of like, you know, chuckled. And I said, well, you know what? I always try to look at the positive side of things. At least now I'm getting to walk through the front door, okay? Not chained in shackles instead of haul up in an elevator from the basement, from the refrigerator basement, cause it's always freezing in that freaking place. Yeah. And so one of the, the old dude was standing off to the side with his arms folded said, well, we don't talk about that. And I'm like, dude, you need to relax. Yeah, I can make jokes if I want to, because it's true. Our, uh, all your losses based on your birth certificate. Aren't all lawsuits based on your birth certificate? Well, no, my loss is not based off of the birth certificates, uh, Stephen Johnson. My lawsuit is based off of the illegal activity that they're doing. 
you know, all these people want to want to have case law and want, and want to see all, all this other stuff. But the fact of the matter is, if they can't get past the facts, we don't need to even look at the case law. And the facts are the facts, Jack, and facts are bad. And it shows exactly what they're what they've done. So, so all caps names is uh, on the driver's license and on your electric bill. That just means you are, are, are a corporation. That means you. That means that you are a citizen of the federal government. And frankly, nobody can be a citizen of the federal government because nobody can be born in a fictitious entity. So that's 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 how you do that nobody's a citizen of the federal government because the federal government is a corporation a fake entity and nobody can be born in it so there you go steve says holy in the course it'd be 1200 next month well it it it, it may it may still be 1200 next month steve we'll see how it goes right now i'm you know going to leave it there uh, until I get uh, enough students in it and enough reviews and to see if I need to make any changes or anything, because it's the first time I've done this. So well, it's not the first time I help people with foreclosure and I've been teaching people a long, a long time, but it's the first time I actually put everything down on the paper so people can just use it at, at their own at their own speed. Now I'm going to go and make a couple of changes on the course. I'm, I have it set up now where you have to complete each one before you but I'm gonna change that because sometime when people get in the course, they're at a certain point in the program and they need to move forward to that point to be able to defend their property. So I'm gonna make those changes tomorrow, so. And that's all I've got tonight. I just wanted to touch base on uh, the property tax lawsuit package since I allowed the uh, radio uh, listeners a deal I thought I need to give my uh, my YouTube people a better deal, and I'm also offering that same deal to uh, people in the city of Lawrence because the city was responsible for me going through what I went through, and I want to make sure that I can help anybody that's uh, that's dealing with anything that's illegal, and what the city is doing is not legal. So, and one of the other things, my wife was going to do her paperwork today, and it turns out. She has a special use permit. And that special use permit allows her to use the property for, for different reasons than normal. The special use permit was given to her from the city. She paid $760 for it. And they screwed up and didn't put an expiration date on it. So my wife has a special use permit for the rest of her life. So they're gonna have a real hard time kicking her out, I think. Well, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a hard time kicking her out because we're going to address the fact that they're harassing her because of the illegal property tax issue. The illegal control over the property deed is allowing them to harass people. And that's harassment if what they're doing is illegal. So that's what I call it anyway. I like to keep it simple. I don't like to use big giant words. I like to keep it simple. Harassment. <laughs> Yeah, well, my documents are put together pretty well. And I have a lot of people um, that are still in their homes that they got to spend Christmas uh, in their homes because they were smart enough to invest in my package and my craziness. And they're still in their homes today. And it's really sad what attorneys are doing to people. Um, I have one lady that's in the group. She wanted to pay them what she owed them. And I told her that that would be that would be great, but if she does that, she needs to make sure that they give her. She needs to make sure that they give her a new contract, either putting things back to where they were, or or whatever. Because if they don't, then they can take her money and say she owed it to them for past, you know, for late payments or whatever, and still go through with the foreclosure. And so what she did was she paid them. And that attorney went and sat down. And another attorney took the foreclosure right from where it was and continued the foreclosure. She found out two months later that her property had been, had been sold 
Um, she found out two months later when the people showed up to change locks on, on the door. And to date, she's still in her house because she actually filed the lawsuit on the record in federal court, but she didn't serve all the parties. So the fact that she had the lawsuit already filed saved her ass. And she filed and she served the parties and then and now she just started the thing. And so she's still she's still in her house. I'm not sure exactly what is the situation now of a month and a half ago or two months ago that I got the report that she was still in her house. All of the people that filed their lawsuits back in October are still in their house. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to check out of here and I'm going to leave some things. If you guys have some things you'd like me to cover um, in my next video, leave me a leave me a comment down below in the, in the comment section. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you don't be late when class starts. And um, I'm Coach Neighbors, and I approve this message. Okay, I heard that so many times I had to say that. So good night, guys. I will see you guys. Actually, I'm probably back on here tomorrow. So if you guys want to come back tomorrow, I'll be here tomorrow. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about, but I'm sure I have plenty to talk about. I just need to figure it out. So I will see you guys later. Good night, all.